believe it or not, the power company is to blame for people who get screwed over, you know, when getting solar panels. So one of the really unfortunate situations that I come across way too often is customer says their solar panel system isn't working and I go find out that it is. It's not doing what it needs to in order to offset the cost of their utility bills based off of what the power company is offering in exchange for their excess electricity. So right here, I have a Rocky Mountain Power net metering um, agreement. Every power company will have one or will explicitly say they don't allow solar panels, but you can go find out who's your utility company, go to their website, find this agreement and run through this document. I'm gonna point out the things in here that I think is the most important from my experience as a solar panel installer as to what goes wrong and what could go wrong for you. All right, so bear with me for a second. I just want to review what a net metering agreement is just in case you're new to solar. Um, so we all know the baseline of what this conversation is. So essentially when you have a grid tied solar panel system, that solar panel system will provide electricity to your house and then it will export power to the grid in most situations. The excess power that goes to the grid is then received and counted from the solar or from the utility company and you are generally provided some kind of compensation for that electricity and that's what they call customer generation net metering uh customer billing some kind of language like that the power company will have and that's how solar panel systems are possible you hear people say oh I, you can save money on your utility bill and it, it'll offset your utility costs and all these things that's that's the vehicle that's making grid tied solar possible is you know being able to get some kind of compensation for giving the uh power company literally your next door neighbor um electricity first thing that you should do and the very first thing that you should understand is how much does your electricity cost? Like what's the rate you're being charged? And what is the rate they're offering for your excess solar panel um, generation? Now, to, to make this make sense, I have to explain sun hours. So there in my area is about five sun hours per day on average. That's where the solar panel system is producing close, let's say close to peak production. It's, you're getting a lot of power. Now for the other 19 hours out of the day, you are not producing electricity or enough to power your home per se. In that situation, you're still relying on the utility company for 19 hours a day for electricity. And there's only a small, you know, it might be more like six to eight hour window some days and some days zero. And it just averages out to be about five hours of where you're actually producing all the electricity you need for your home and then giving some back to the power company. If the majority of your electricity, let's say on average, 80% of it is given to the power company and 20% of it is self-consumed, that 80% of the electricity that you give the power company needs to offset the electricity you still used from them at like nighttime. Looking over this document, which I know well because I've done solar in this area, right here where it says, um, export customer generation ener energy credit rates says 7.715 cents per all kilowatt exported. And then it has a different schedule below. That's October through May with a lower rate. So the cost of electricity, like the blended rate for this utility company for residents like this would be probably 12 to 14 cents. That's with taxes, fees, and all that. So if you are give if you're given seven cents, but you're giving them maybe let's say 12 cents, you're close, like you're in a situation where you have to give them more electricity because your electricity is less valuable in order to offset that cost that you're buying from them. Now, now this can get complicated, um, but the main thing that you wanna look at, you need to check to see if there are any monthly fees or if there's demand charges or there's any other complicated things. And if this is, you know, one of the more uh, mature markets, they probably have a more complicated rate schedule and you might need to consult with uh, someone uh, in your local area um, and understand it. But understanding the basis of it is you'll be able to have a conversation um, with them and ask the right questions. Um, if you have a, if you're in a newer market where solar is less mature, it's likely you have a one-to-one -one credit. 
is, you know, you give the utility company a kilowatt hour, you can take one back. You can just kind of use them as a battery if you would. Going back to that customer that I went to where um, they're like, hey, my solar panels are broken. I still have an electrical bill. And I go out and say, your solar panels are fine. Your system was designed incorrectly. So this is where it goes into sales because the sales company has usually a tool, a digital tool where they can design the solar panel system on your house, calculate the energy it's going to produce, and then use historical data on your utility bill usage to find out how much money it's gonna save. Well, if there's by mistake, a calculation that is off in the software, say how much electricity they are projecting that you will self consume, if it's more like 60% self-consumption, where it's unrealistic, not like say 20% self-consumption, based off of that five hours of window you have to produce electricity um, per day, then that'll throw all the numbers off on your proposal. So you could have a system where it's like, this is estimated to offset your whole electric bill. And then when it comes to the real world and what you know actually is installed, you are left with say a 20, 30, $40 per month electricity bill because um, it didn't quite, wasn't quite large enough, it wasn't quite designed right. Maybe you needed battery storage or something like that in order to get closer to like an 80% offset um, of your self-consumption. Now going back to the utility company and what, what things they can do to screw you over on this agreement is you wanna check the fine print on your agreement to see how long the terms are. Um, for instance, let's say you have a net metering agreement with your power company that's good for 15 years, but your solar panel system has a loan or something for say 20 years um, or 25 years or something like that, where you're expecting it to you know, have a 25 year lifespan. If your net metering agreement is only for 15 years, they're like, you gotta look through the fine print to see if they can switch up that agreement on you and say, oh, we don't allow solar panels in our area anymore. You know, it, the market's going towards like pushing incentives and energy efficiency and less emissions and all of these things. And so I, I see solar being a part of like the future and not just going away, but you need to be able to protect yourself so that you don't end up with a solar panel system where it's useless after 15 years, even though it's still operating and producing electricity, you're just not getting paid from the power company for it. Generally these net metering um, agreements um, last for a year and there'll be a period that's like the true period essentially how much electricity did we give you how much did you give us and you could either get nothing because of the excess electricity you get the power company they don't pay out for in their agreement you could get a check because they do pay out at a specific rate um, and make money off of it or you could owe them money depending on which utility company that you have and so you can look through the net metering agreement and figure that out but a lot of sales companies might try to give you a massive solar panel system and then um, you might end up over producing electricity and then just giving it away for free and not being compensated um, for it thing about that too is like in rocky mountain powers the true up periods in the spring and if you were to look at the average person's utility bill it has a huge spike in the summer it drops down and it kind of baselines for the winter most people heat their homes with gas and they use electricity for uh, AC units and that's where the majority of their power comes from. I've seen situations where customers use like say electric heat and they have a lot higher load in the winter time. Well, your solar panels aren't producing as much in the winter because you know if you're in an area like this, these panels had snow on them. Um, where even though your system on paper could offset your whole electric bill, it depends on when they start counting your credits and how long they roll over. In some situations, you just might not be able to install a solar panel system to offset your electricity costs. And in that situation, if you still want solar panels, it makes a lot of sense to just do a partial system. As much as it's not like just taking care of your whole electric bill, like having some panels to reduce your cost, maybe something you can pay cash for, it's a little bit more affordable, makes a lot of sense. To be honest, I understand where the power company's coming from. Like they're a business that has to make money. And so if you are taking away from their profits and they're like a private business or whatever, they have to evaluate that situation and say, hey, we're losing money because let's say the solar customers aren't helping maintain the grid infrastructure, but they're using it for free. So we have to take our cut for them being able to backfeed and even facilitating this net metering process. I get where they're coming from. Like, I, I don't think they're wrong. Now, where, where I do think they're wrong is that they can kind of change these agreements 
um, just by having a meeting and a vote and now they have a new net metering agreement as of today. And I was actually doing an installation for a customer where the power company did that, where they changed their um, rate schedule. Um, it's actually higher now at seven cents. And I was doing the installs for customers. And one of the things that a lot of solar installers do is they'll, they'll file the net metering, they'll file the permit with the engineering and everything, and then they'll install the system as soon as the city permit is back. But they won't necessarily wait until the power company has approved the net metering agreement. And this, I know like from a standpoint, it makes sense to be on the safe side to wait for everything to be done and then start your project. But so I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's how a lot of people do it. If not, everybody does it. The reason is if you go to Rocky Mountain Power's website, it says like 30 days to approve the application and 30 days to do something else in 10 more days. And it puts it out like 70 days. Um, if I was a customer and I was getting solar panels on my house, I would specifically ask the customer and be like, hey, I understand this is gonna take more time and push the project out, but I'm not willing to have my system installed until you have secured the permit and also secured the net metering agreement and it's signed and I have evidence of what schedule I'm on and what I'm going to be compensated for my solar panel electricity. So if we check out just the meter on this house right here, like the, the power company in most situations is going to pull out the meter can and then put in a new one. And this one just gives them more data. It's interesting, if you were to install a solar panel system and not have a net meter, all of the electricity that you push back to the grid is actually going to be billed to you as power that you consumed, not power that you used. Um, I know a lot of people in the industry has figured out that the hard way um, with a lot of uh, you know, <laughs> customers, but that new physical meter is going to track that. In some areas, you might need an actual production meter that sits on side of it, a second one that only counts the electricity that the solar panels are producing. Um, I like the idea of those. It's a little bit redundant. And then you also should have a some kind of software sign in on your phone where you can log in and track how much power the solar panels are producing. Uh, those are the things that I would in brief be aware of is, you know, what's the cost of your electricity and how much are you being credited? Look for any hidden fees where you have to pay monthly or any weird things like your excess solar electricity is, you know, isn't rolled over month to month or you aren't paid for it or anything like that. So if you read through that document, that'll give you a really good idea there. And then also understanding how much your solar panels are actually going to produce and how much is you know actually gonna be credited um, to you, seeing like the full picture on it. Um, I hope this video is helpful information for solar net metering. I'll try to stay in the comments down here and answer some questions because this can get complicated because every power company has like a completely unique system and might do, you know, have some weird charges and things like that. So I'll try to help out. And I appreciate any of the other people in the solar industry who are watching this video, if you can help answer questions as well um, so that we can, you know, just make sure to build a better community and that people aren't being, you know, screwed over and solar panel products aren't being like misrepresented. When it comes down to it, I don't really like the net metering agreements and I don't like the government incentives or any incentives for solar whatsoever. I think it does the industry a disservice in the long term. I understand these programs, you know, one-to-one -one net metering credits and things really helped the integration of solar panel systems. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's a good investment when you have to rely on other people. If you get the tax credit, if your net metering agreement stays for the lifetime of your system or doesn't just get dropped or whatever, I think solar product is like made as a independent way where you can have control and get electricity produce it yourself use it yourself and all of that and those things just get in the way of like what the actual benefits of solar is and so i honestly think that we'd be better off if we just got rid of all the incentives and net meter agreements and we just relied on solid solar panel systems that had battery storage and self-sustained electricity and i think that's a better more useful product than we currently have rather than saving a few bucks or maybe losing a few bucks on your utility bill in the long term i'll put a link to the playlist right here um, for grid tide solar i'm pumping out as many videos i can as fast as i can just to put some good information out there 
um, so people can be educated. Whether you have solar panels and you need to fix an issue, they're not covering your bill, or you're looking to get panels in the future, or next house, or whatever. But if you see you in the next video.